Okay, you stop with the hello. You don't have to be the first one. To Hey, Lois. Hey, how are you? How are you? <laughs> I'm well. I'm well. Good. I was wondering about what's going on in Milwaukee then. Is, is someone there or closing the house or what's... So right now, it's presented as a temporary thing to go to St. Louis. So uh, uh, the, the house is still um, in play. Uh, there's no clear idea of how there's a way to for them to be in the house without my father's mobility mm -hmm. but uh there's been so the house is still the house is still active uh -huh. quiet, quiet but active <laughs> i had i have to tell you something right now because i have to i want to I don't want to lose this moment of thought. So I feel compelled to share it with you, <laughs> uh, even though it's not our Rambam stuff. But um, I'm doing the book of Eov with a class. And um, so we're just, we're just starting the book. And um, the, the class wanted to, they don't want to just do the book. They want to. They want to do a close, a close reading of the book. Um, so, I obviously everybody. I'm encouraging everybody how well this is happens. I don't know. I'm encouraging everybody to read different translations and to find different um, sources um, so that everybody can bring you know, uh, other materials to our discussion. But I, I was suggesting that one of the ways that we would read it, at least one of the strains that we would read it is something that I once heard uh, Rabbi Jonathan Sachs say, um, which is he suggested that the book of Eov is coming out of um, a story that, is um, in the Gemara where God, um, when he says, Nasa Adam Bitsalmenu, uh, let, let us make man in our image. So God is talking to angels. So the, the Gemara says that he created angels 
And then he asked them, should I make man? And the angel said, well, what's he going to do? You know, and so God shows them human history. And then they say, no, <laughs> you should not make him. Because the, the you know, creation is good. Everything has been good, 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 good. And now you're going to introduce man who's going to bring corruption and evil in the world through his choices. Um, so God destroys that first group. And then he makes another group and he asks them, should I make man? And they ask him, well, what's he going to do? Again, he shows them the history of humankind. And again, they say, no, you shouldn't make him. Um, you know, why would you make him? Uh, so he destroys that group. Then he makes a third group. And then that third group, he, um, again, he asks it and they go, look, the first two, you asked this question to, and then you destroyed them you know, do whatever you, basically, you should do whatever you think is good. Um, and so, and he ends it by saying, um, even though, um, essentially paraphrasing it, he says, even though I know it's going to be bad for a long time, I have patience. I, I'm going to endure. I have patience uh, through all the difficult times. Um which sort of ties into that thing we're doing on Thursday where God holds up no say avon. He holds up, he like bears the sins. Like he's, he's, he's got uh, this view that eventually, um, you know, mankind's going to sort of redeem themselves. So Rabbi Sachs, he, I saw him say this in print. I've tried to find it in print. I've seen he quotes this Medr this Gemara a lot in print, but I've never seen him say this point in print, but I saw him, you know, on a video, I saw him say this in a lecture. He said that that's why the Satan is traveling around. And that's why God asked him, did you see Job? Because God is saying, Job's the guy. He, he is the, the, the proof. He's the, he's the, he's why I created man. And then Satan is saying, well, this is not proof of anything. You, you, you just gave him this magical life. He, it, you know, that's not proof that you've, you know, that human beings have finally produced a prototype. Uh, you know, and so God says, all right, take stuff away. You'll see. And so it's coming out of that context of that Gemara. So the thing is, once you see that, if you start to look at the at the, the next chapter and the chapter afterwards, you start to see lots of textual connection to to that to the creation story. So, um, in other words, this is not it's not first of all it's a, a very clever, I mean, way of explaining the context for the dialogue between God and the Satan, but it's also, and the te you know, the testing, but it also calls your attention back to the creation story. And I've just, because I've just been noticing at least at the beginning, the first, at the beginning of Job, that there's all sorts of references going back to the first, uh, even to the first day, like chapter three starts Job's, uh, sort of poetic rant um, in suffering. And um, you you just, you see him talking about, he calls it the day of his birth, but you see a lot of references to night and day and stuff. And it just looks like that you're being taken back to um, the creation story. So and, then- And doesn't he also say at the end, were you there when I created? Yes, this? yes, yes. So there's a lot of stuff. And so I'm really looking forward to, to more of this. I mean, uh, to, to, to more, to seeing it going back and kind of commentary, you know, the question you would, you would sort of ask, which I guess is what Rabbi Six was saying broadly, you know, um, this is not just about suffering, but this is about like, the purpose of creation. This, this is really a meditation on creation itself. But then, um, so as we're building on this, um, 
so you uh in in uh we went to Avraham arguing about Sodom. So if you if you if you think about in Avram arguing about Sodom, there is a prelude, a kind of introduction to Avram arguing about Sodom, which, which is God speaking to the he seems to be speaking to angels and saying, I have to tell him, because these two angels are going to destroy Sodom. And in that context, God's saying, I have to discuss this now with Avraham. Um, and, um, be, and and why Avraham? Because he's going to teach his children to go in the way of God, to go in justice and um, in the way of tzedek and stucco mishpat, uh, righteousness and justice. Um, so there's a kind of a little bit of introduction there. And then it, 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 it just, as I'm thinking about that, it, it sounds like Avraham also is, is might in other words when he's talking about this to the angels he's sort of pointing to avraham as this person the angels don't argue back but the but he, he seems to be pointing to avraham as this prototype in other words i and 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 then you have avram arguing now avram's not arguing about suffering avram's arguing about justice but you see like avraham if you think if you're starting to think this way, Avram in some way is also being pointed to as a kind of prototype that would answer the angels. You know, why did you, why did you create man? And so there's a, the Empirke Avos, it, who, who is the foil of Avraham? Who, who is the one who's like the negative version of Avraham? You mean like or, enticing God to do, yeah well like, or, or like just not, who, who's identified uh, at first he, at first right yeah who's like the other side of avraham so the mm -hmm. other side of avraham who's pointed to is Bilam. Mm -hmm. the the it's a, in pirkei Ovis it says um uh the you know the students of avraham have these characteristics the students of Bilam have these characteristics oh. Bilam. Bilam is the foil of Avraham. Also, there's a Rash, Rashi brings a medrash that when Bilam saddles his donkey, it says Bilam got up and saddled his donkey. It doesn't say he got up early to saddle his donkey. It says Bilam saddled his donkey. And he said, and, and so in the medrash, God says to Bilam, you know, wicked one, you're saddling your donkey. Avram got up early and saddled his donkey. You just got up and saddled your donkey. Again, it sets up Avraham as the counter and in the Bilam story in the Bilam story it refers to an angel stopping him and it, sa it says there was a malach there and it uses the word lisatan lo lisatain lo or lisatan lo to stop him so the word satan comes up in the in the Bilam story. Now, it obviously this is sort of like a Chagall kind of thing. It's not, it's, 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 they're not all coming up where you expect them to come up. But the fact that you have, you have Avraham and Bilam sort of juxtaposed with each other, and the word Satan comes up in the Bilam story, <laughs> and, and there's an angel in the Bilam story, and in this case, Bilam is the one, it has the elements. It doesn't have them in the right place, but it, it has a lot of these elements mixed around. And uh, I don't know, the whole thing, like there there seems to be this kind of, uh, Chagall could do this. Somebody, it takes somebody, you know, right. who's willing to put right. all these elements around, the, all these here. elements around. Yeah, right, like that's stuff. hovering over yeah. here. This is hovering right. over there. Right. And then you understand why the Gemara wants to put Bilam because why is Bilam opposite Avram? It's not just because of these qualities. Bilam's opposite Avram. There's, there's, mm. there's, uh, there's, there's a lot more. Once you start looking at both of them, suddenly all these other elements start showing up. 
Anyways, uh, I had to say it out loud, otherwise I would forget. I, otherwise, okay. when, yeah, and then you can always come back and ask, what did I say? And I'll say, I don't remember. But There you go. <laughs> thank you. Uh, By the way, I, yeah. I have a question. When you're doing this, EO, in this class, are you going to include that passage from Moby Dick? Do you remember that you read us something from Moby Dick? There was a preacher. Yeah. Wasn't that was fabulous. By the that way. was with that, and that's about that's about Noah. I mean, oh. that's about no, 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 no. It's about Yona. Oh yes, it's about Yona. So yeah, but no, yeah. now you've done it. You've done it again. Yeah, it's about Yona. Right, right. Yeah, it's about Yona. Yeah. He definitely deserves to be in this thing. No, definitely right. Yona deserves to be in it. Oh, well, I'll. I'll just yeah. tell you, I had a friend who was very, very mad at God because of Eo, you know, and kept yeah. saying, how could God have done that to Eo? Yeah. You know, what? Yeah. this is horrible. What is it? And the best thing I could come up with, which was ages ago, well, not that any better now, but was that God is just trying to tell us you cannot read the mind of God, you know, at the end, that basically, right. that, and so it wasn't, it didn't right. really happen. Nobody really suffered like that. It's a metaphor, yeah. and he's telling us right. you cannot read but, the mind of God. Right, but I, I'm also thinking, I, but it's dangerous to, to. I'm only doing it with a light grasp, but mm -hmm. I, I've been, um, in the last several months, I've been more focused on this. It's something that's bothered me for a few years, which is um, what reincarnation, Gilgal. Um, Gilgal reincarnation is a notion that you will find in almost every Orthodox uh, path. Now, as you, Hasidim talk about reincarnation, Litvaks talk about reincarnation, Sfardim talk about reincarnation. Uh, almost, you know, like they all have reincarnation stories. Um, so the way I've recently been provocatively presenting it was obviously we don't believe in reincarnation. Because if we really believed in reincarnation, you wouldn't be bothered by the injustice of suffering. You, because if you really believed in reincarnation, you just say, because in, in, as whenever you dip into the theology of reincarnation, as presented by any of these groups, most extensively, by the Arizal, and that might be how it got into everybody's groups, but but uh, the the notion is that um, you come back to fix things that happen in previous lives, and that might mean that there's suffering that happens here or opportunities that happen here that are somehow a tikkun for what happened in the previous life. Once you accept that notion, then that would be, in other words, it takes the bite out of the question of the injustice. It, if you ask, why do the righteous suffer? I look, I, what, what are you asking when you ask why the righteous suffer? It seems unjust. It's unjust. Why do the righteous suffer? So um, the, the answer, this is the answer. It's not an answer. The Ramchal mentions it as an answer. This is not an answer. It's the answer. By, by the answer, you I don't have to know for sure it's the answer. I just have it available. And therefore, if somebody if somebody says, where's the justice? I'll say it's probably it has to do with Gilgal. Mm -hmm. And then it, it, in a, I don't know exactly if it does or it doesn't. But you can't say to me, you've got an ironclad proof of injustice when when you could just say it probably has to do with Gilgal, as people have said at different times uh, in history, even in modern times, or Bavad Yosef got in trouble for saying that the Holocaust were people that are working through a tikkun. 
they, they're working through a tikkun from previous generations. He said that it, it, there was outrage in Israel when they when it was reported that he said that. But that he why wouldn't you say that? You, you don't even have to say I know that. You say it could be that, and then you would you would take the bite out of the the, the theological conundrum. The what? how can the righteous suffer? The answer what? is yes, they're perfectly righteous now, and he's suffering. But in a previous life, he may have had something that requires him to do a tikkun. So the thing is, it's not presented as the answer. The question remains, and people have see it as a real challenge, and they come up with all different kinds of answers for why the righteous suffer. My only explanation for why that can be is they must not believe in Gilgal. Because if they believed in Gilgul, they that you can't you can't say that you have all the you don't have all the pieces. You think you have all the pieces. This guy's completely righteous. You don't have all the pieces because it's still possible that righteous people suffer. Then they suffer because of, they were around before and they're doing a tikkun. That that's a a strong possibility. And since that's a strong possibility, it's not a biting question. As a theological question. But what, what is the question? But what is a question is what am I supposed to do with suffering? What am I supposed to do with it? I don't remember past lives. What am I supposed to do about it? I look if if I did something wrong, then the Gemara says you're suffering, and I go, yeah, it's because I did something wrong. I see that I did things wrong. Then I don't know for sure that's why I'm suffering, but at least usefully. I can I can do something about it. I'm going to try to fix myself and do tshuva. Uh, maybe I didn't learn enough Torah. The Gemara says so. I'm going to start to learn Torah. But then, but the, but, but so th that's a so like when I'm reading Job right now, I I'm looking at this. What is is, is he asking about the justice of suffering, or once he's figured out that he didn't do anything wrong to deserve it, is he now asking, what am I supposed to do about the suffering? What am I supposed to do with it? What, what am I? And, and to that, again, I'm just, this is a working hypothesis, to that God says, in other words, God, by God saying, you're not going to know what, what the source of the suffering is. I'm not telling you. That's essentially, he's not just saying you don't, you don't know. You're not uh, capable of knowing why you're suffering. He's not just saying that. He's leaving him with his suffering. So in other words, God is saying, you're not always going to know why you're suffering. So then, then the question is, what am I supposed to do with it? Well, if what you do you want believe... me to do with it? If you did believe it was a tikkun, wouldn't you just bless God for giving you this one and you'll right. go on? And right. He doesn't and want next. you to. He doesn't want you to. Right. He wants you to, to live with suffering for some reason. He doesn't want you to know why. Right. So right. I, I saw like uh, Simon Jacobson, he, he, he didn't answer because my, the way I, Posing provocatively posing the question, you know, I did it with Mordechai Becher and with other people. The way I'm provocatively posing it is, provocatively posing it is, that obviously you don't believe in Gilgal because if you believe in Gilgal, you wouldn't spend your time talking about this question. Hmm. You wouldn't spend your time talking about it. Move on, if you believed in Gilgal. But so, how can you both believe in Gilgal and be talking about this question? So that is the provocative thing of it. So I, but, so yeah, I say the re in other words i that the 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 uh so but you could say that the reason god doesn't what in other words why isn't god telling me the reason for suffering mm -hmm. he's not telling me the reason for it because he doesn't think i need it or he doesn't want me to have it mm. he just wants me it could be the same thing for why doesn't he tell me what's going to happen after i die you know, there are people who suggest, Shimshafal Hirsch seems to suggest it. The reason he doesn't tell you what's going to happen after you die is because he doesn't want you spending so much time on it. He just wants you to focus on now. Just focus on now. Do your best job for now. Don't focus. Rabbi, if you believed in it, 
wouldn't it be horrible? Because you would look at people who were really suffering and say, boy, you must have been a real schmendrick in your last life. I mean, it, that's horrible. <laughs> no, it, it, because you don't know. You don't know like they don't know. I'm saying, but I'm saying we do. They suppose, ask any chassid if they believe in Gilgal. Yeah, they have they a do. developed theology of Gilgal. They do. They already have it. So I'm saying we were, so Simon Jacobson suggested that for some reason he didn't he wasn't answering the whole thing about Sadiq Barallo. He he was just saying he was just saying why is it that he, that he, that this theology just doesn't seem to be well developed. It's not a because why aren't we teaching this to our children? You know what's most likely to happen? You know what we tell our children? Your soul is going to leave and it's going to go to some holding space and then it's going to eventually go to Olam Haba. Uh, then there's going to be Trias Amesim. That's not, that's not what we really believe. What we really believe is very likely your soul is going to go into another being and you're going to you're going to live another life. That's what's most likely. That's, that seems to be what we most likely believe. So why aren't you teaching it to your children? Why aren't you teaching it to everybody? This is reincarnation. Is a, it, it has a lot to say for it. It's got a. It's, it's there's a lot of a lot of. It has that issue of tikkun, uh, but it's got a lot of good things about it. First of all, it, it feels nice to know that you might reenact, re reconnect with people that you love in this life, and and it's also something you can see. There's a lot of ways to present it. It's very very pleasant and um is, and is your, could i yeah is your is your promise that some suffering is deserved most sufferings deserved or all suffering is deserved don't know you see if you want to have it as a blanket thing you want to you, you so you, you you're not offering it as a total solution the, no, the I'm just saying it doesn't. I'm suffering. saying the problem. I'm just saying the problem of suffering is not a burning question. If that's only if you believe that all suffering is deserved. I mean that no. that's built into your promise no. of Gilgal. No, no, because the Gemara says there might be something called Yisurim Shalava. Maybe maybe they were secretly implying uh, Gilgal. I don't know. Rosadigon didn't think so. Uh, they, there's, we don't know. Some suffer. The Gemara is being very pragmatic. The Gemara Brochus. If you're suffering, the first thing you should ask yourself is, what did I do wrong? If you can't figure out what you did wrong, next step: Am I learning enough Torah? If that's not a sufficient thing, it might be Yisurim Shalavo. Yisurim out of. I find like, I, you know, the mean, whole notion of Yisurim Shalavo is really tough to take. Fine, but I'm saying it, it provides it as a pragmatic thing. They're being very pragmatic about it. We don't know. We don't know why we suffer. That's essentially at the end okay. of the book, Job, God said it, right? He said, you don't, we don't know why you suffer. He 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 seems the Gemara is giving you, you know, now that that's the case, what is the best thing to do? Reasonable, reasonable, it's reasonable to think that if I'm suffering because of something I did, try to change it. If I'm suffering because I didn't learn enough Torah, try to change that. And then if not, I'm just going to have to live with the suffering. If I can't, if I can't be productive about it, but ultimately it's all about that. It seems like that, that we, it doesn't, that, that now, what do I do if I'm suffering? I, I believe God has a reason for it. I believe God has a reason for it. I just don't know what it is. It may have nothing to do with something I did wrong. That that opinion of the friends of, B, of Eov, that it's because you did something wrong, is dismissed in the book of Eov. It's not a complete answer. Let's just say that. It's dismissed. So I can't assume that all suffering is because I did something wrong. That seems to be dismissed. So... I it's it's not this it's not that there's no reason for suffering, it's just that God's not going to tell it to us. He's not telling us what the reason is. Now, if he's not telling me what the reason is, he in in some ways he's saying just don't go there. 
don't go there. Don't spend too much time on it. So then what am I supposed to do? I'm supposed to then live with suffering. Now, maybe I'm supposed to do what the Buddhists do, which is see suffering and then, you know, learn to live with it. You know, change, you know, whatever, which which has to do with change. It, it's a deep change of, you know, of, of how I... Uh, how I see things in the world, you know, change my attitudes, et cetera, with r relation to connections and attachments and things like that. And it will reduce suffering. In other words, acknowledge suffering and, and deal with suffering instead of trying to come up with um, the reason for suffering. Don't spend time with the reason for suffering. Just sort of take suffering for granted and now do something with it. Okay. Something because more we, like that. Uh, before Lois grabs it away from me, why isn't Holam Habas sufficient? I'm suffering. I know that I'm going to have surcease of suffering. I'm going to get a reward that's going to compensate me. Somewhere. I'm secure in knowing this because God, why do I need to drag in the Gilgulim? To fix them. Well, the, the reason I'm bringing up Gilgulim is Gilgulim. just to diffuse the whole uh, thing. Uh, I, In other words, it's if if you believe in Gilgal, which apparently, you know, everybody does, once you believe in Gilgulim, why are you even asking this question? Why are you even why are you bothered by this question? That's that's only if you believe that all suffering that all that all suffering is a tikkun. That, 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 that no, you don't have to believe it is. It just might be. That's not the reason that, that the question might be. The reason that the question of righteous suffering is is like a, it's like a close it's like a, a laboratory study. If if you believed that all suffering can only come about because of doing something wrong, and we know this guy didn't do anything wrong, then how can he be suffering? Well, he didn't do anything wrong in this life. There we go. There you go. There life. you go. But that then you are. Yeah. Yes, but then it's still something he did that he's being punished. No, we don't for. know. We don't know. Maybe, maybe there's a kind of suffering that comes from not. We don't know. Okay. All we know is that your question is not if you assume that that suffering comes because you did something wrong, and you're saying he didn't do anything wrong. So how can he be suffering? That's the problem of the Odyssey. Why the righteous suffer? So, so, so this takes the wind out of the question. He may yes. have done something wrong in a previous life. That's because you believe that suffering could only be the. Another answer is there's something called Yisurim Shalava. You don't like Yisurim Shalava as an answer. You want to fall back on the fact that you must have done something wrong, like Eov's friends. So even there, you could just say. That there was uh, that there was uh, a previous uh, the 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 guy had previous life and he's doing a tikkun. The urgency Rabbi, would, would is taken out of then, Would someone then who's living a blessed, beautiful life with no suffering was that mean that he this is his only life, his first life? He didn't. I mean, uh, we what? don't know. I I'm sure I know and. <laughs> In the theology of the Gilgulim, they, they've got this all worked out. You know, they've got a whole system they, for it. I don't know. I don't know. I, I, and also, you could ask yourself, you know, what it, even this, why don't we know about what happened in a previous life? You know why you don't know? Because it's not useful for you to know. Don't go there. You don't need it. That's what somebody, you know, it's almost like what Hashem's saying. Like that thing about what's going on, what happens after I die? If it was important for you to know what happens after you die, I would have told you. It's not important. Just go about your work. <laughs> so God instills in us one of the greatest questions we keep asking, keep asking. I don't want to tell you. <laughs> I don't want to tell you. He does, he's <laughs> not saying that necessarily. Figure it out. Figure it he's out. Not, Believe what he's you not want. only saying that. He's not saying I don't want to tell you. It by telling, he's not, it doesn't end with that. I don't want to tell you. The way it should end is I'm not telling you. And therefore, go about yeah. your business. Uh, this is okay. not, in other words, this is, this, th I'm, I'm actually helping you here. This is not 
is this an insolvable problem? Why am I telling you it's insolvable? So you don't spend your time on it. It is a waste of time to spend it on it. I don't want you spending your time on it. I want you spending your time on other things. Now, mm. if that's if that's the thing of Job, then it goes back to, so then Job, need, what what is Job left with? His suffering. Right. Well. Right. So now, Job a, gets his suffering resolved. Right. But I <laughs> am after the book of Job. So if I'm having suffering, my, suf my suffering is not necessarily going to get to re be resolved. So what do I benefit from the book of Job? This is all hypothesis. What I benefit is to know that it's not important to know why I'm suffering. The Gemara is giving me a pragmatic direction. If I, if I do have some idea about it, then try to fix that thing. But it's not, it's not that that thing is the reason I'm suffering. It's just pragmatically useful way of, you know, leveraging my suffering, right. so, like leveraging it. But it, but it's, and, and so it could, you know, I have well, to sort of deal with the suffering. Now, why the thing is in the book of Job, they don't bring up reincarnation. This is a problem for the Gilgulling people. Like it, at first blush, maybe, maybe it is. I, I, I'm specifically, as I'm going through it this time, I'm trying to go through it with Gilgulim in mind, just to see how somebody who um, believes in it, would, leaning yeah. into Gilgulim would understand it. And maybe I'm going to see all sorts of references to Gilgulim. Right. It. You know, but he, he, yeah. he actually doesn't get the suffering resolved. What he gets no. is stopping suffering. Yeah. He doesn't right. understand why he suffered. And also he doesn't get back what he lost he, he just gets no. a new. he just yeah. gets a new yeah. a new kind of slate so you could say that in that way it's not it's not over entirely it's just right uh, which satisfies nobody everyone always yeah, says what right. a new which, which also right. so which is also evidence that it's just uh supposed to be a uh you know a, a thought experiment well, well you could say it's not, a thought not, experiment not, 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 by anybody going through suffering is also looking at this book for direction. I'm yeah. suggesting that part of the direction is don't look it, don't look for reasons. Don't look for reasons. That's not going to be helpful. Don't look for yeah. reasons. If pragmatically you want to yes. leverage it, go ahead. Go ahead and leverage it mm -hmm. pragmatically. But don't look for reasons. Do, instead, live with the suffering and in, and in other words, if, like clearly Eov wants it. he just wants it to be over like we all do we just want it to be over so mm -hmm. then if there is a system out there that helps you live with your suffering in a way uh that gives meaning etc cetera, etc cetera, go with it you know go go explore it in other words don't go be pragmatic don't go looking for reasons looking for theology looking for whatever when it comes to suffering be pragmatic with your suffering. Somebody's offering uh, an aspirin, take an aspirin. If somebody's offering a, an ideology that helps you with it, a way of turning it into something meaningful and stuff that helps you work with it, uh, self-hypnosis or other kinds of things that people have used in management of, of, of suffering, switching suffering to pain and all those kinds of things, that be pragmatic about it be pragmatic but don't don't go off in a world in a theological place that that is not available something right like that. and a person who was not religious who was an atheist would look at yeah. suffering as just it's the way nature is yeah you know there's no reason behind it it's right. just how nature and they, assembles and itself. they may then go off because of that they may just be pragmatic and find solutions. They may become a Buddhist, right, or or something well, like that, yeah. which is a a way. But I you think know, that would explain Buddhist. it, right? But yeah. isn't that yeah. reincarnation, though? Right. It so, could yeah. be. In other words, in a certain in a certain way, the the thing one of the things about reincarnation is why don't you know? So the yeah. so uh, what I would say is once you've told me that nobody knows. If you if that's the case, then nobody knows. 
then then I would say, okay, so the message is it's not important to know. You want mm-hmm. to know. I'm not saying I don't want to know. It's just right. not important. I would say yeah, the same a, about Olam Haba. What's the nature of Olam, uh, of Olam Haba? I would say no, no. it's not important to know. It's not important. Right. If you, right. Again, you want to be pragmatic and leverage uh, a few data points and, a, and some poetry, go ahead. But if you're asking me, should you be spending your time on it, like the Rambam sort of says even about Mashiach, you should be spending your time on it. No, it's it's not something we know right now. So don't need to spend your time on it pragmatically. This is that's part of the message. Just, just yes, Rabbi, you know the movie yeah. Defend, defending your life, which yes. is all about reincarnation. Yes. Okay, yeah. there's it's a very good movie. Everyone loves yeah. it, but yeah. there's a flaw in that movie. She, yeah. the woman in the movie, show they show her past lives, and she's been brave in every past life. And right. yet she didn't move on to the further life than this one. I, I think it's a flaw. I mean, I, I really like the movie, but I really do yeah. think that she would have been in a more advanced place than he would. Anyway. Right. So, right. Okay. Once you start coming up with a theology about it, you can get very stuck in it. Huh. I, I know. And I could see maybe that's why they didn't want to uh, promote it so much. Even though, like everyone talks, I was, I was just like the last. There's a guy who's been every year. He's been to one Cholent Shmuz that I've done on Thursday nights. So last year, the last one we were talking about this subject, and I had there's maybe 15, 20 people. I asked them all, raise your hands if any of you have ever heard a story about Gilgulim. Everybody raised their hands, and I said, and then I asked them, how come we don't teach this to every single one? Why don't we teach this to our children? I, and there were some young kids there. I said, in your school, do they tell you that after you die, you're going to be a Gilgul into another person, and that before you were here, you were another person before, or a cat, or something like that? Um, and they said, no. But you have heard story about Gilgulim, right? Why aren't they teaching it to you? <laughs> so this guy said, I was here last year and you brought up the same subject. I didn't even remember. <laughs> you know, to me, every time I think of it, I think it's the first time I ever thought of it. But, <laughs> but uh, yeah, so the thing is, if the, so Simon Jacobs, I, I think he was opining that it might just lead to a kind of laziness of thought. And maybe that's why they didn't want to promote it as much. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's sort of it's sort of interesting if you have a theology like that but you're not promoting it because of the pragmatic problem that it'll lead to that makes it sound almost maybe you don't teach it until someone asks why am I maybe it's not taught that way it's only taught after the fact maybe maybe I know I know that my Ramosha Shapiro we had a baby that died you know, after a day and Ramosha Shapiro on the phone, I was talking to Ramosha Shapiro about whether, cause there was a social worker in the hospital. She was saying that we should do a burial to make it real, and especially for Tsippy, who wasn't there when the baby died. And so um, I called Ramosha Shapiro and he goes, no, leave this alone. This was a neshama that had to come down for a tiku. Like he, he said it to me, it was like point blank. This is an neshama that came for a tikkun. It had its tikkun. It it it's done. It doesn't need any memory in this world. It didn't do anything in this world except for that one tikkun. And we only have matzevas and and cemetery, you know, and and this kind of thing for somebody who was active in this world. We don't have it for people that weren't. But he just said it point blank to me. Hmm. This is the fact. It was an neshama came here for a tikkun. It only needed. A little bit of a tikkun, and now it's gone, and let it go. So there, I guess maybe you're right. It comes out when it needs to come out, and then it doesn't come out when it doesn't need to. Come right, out. right. But that area, the Ramchal, it bothered Mordechai when I was bringing it up to Mordechai Becher. Especially the Ramchal lists it as one of like twelve, eleven, or twelve possible answers to why bad things happen to good people. And then I, I mean, you know, you know, Tzadik Varalo. But I said so. I said to him, what do you mean one of the 11? That's that's the answer. Why does it just, it's one answer. Not one answer to I know why it happened. I don't have to know why it happened. One answer to you don't need to know why it happened. 
That's all. Okay. Don't be bothered by it. Anyways. If you okay. followed that, if your baby <laughs> yeah. came for just a tikkun, that yeah. would mean that there is another life now that that baby is living. That's a good, it's just a neat little, little tikkun and there's a person there, right? Or it could mean that it doesn't need to come back in Gilgulim anymore and it just right. it finished right. everything and it doesn't Alam need haba. to come back. Yeah. Right. Right. That, that kind of thing. But in other words, this just let go was this thing. But he brought up the tikkun thing. It was like with no doubt, it was just like, this is the Neshama, came here for a tikkun. It did its tikkun. It's not part of this world. It doesn't need to be remembered in this world. Let it go. Hmm. Well, okay. <laughs> right. When is this EO class? When do you teach it? It's Where? on Mondays. It's on Zoom. It's a. It's this Evanston group. They're a nice group, but they don't have their... Um, I would characterize them as they belong to the Reconstructionist Synagogue or to Mishkan. They come, for, I mean, some of them I've been studying with for several years, but it's, you know, it's Reconstruction. They're, they're, they're very much from a Reconstructionist background. At this point, we are so conditioned to learning with each other. It doesn't make a difference. I don't think, I don't, I don't see as much of a difference, but it could mm. be, I don't know if you would, what you'd feel like. I mean, they're nice people. They're very nice but people. But I listen in sometimes. Yeah, yeah. I mean. Uh, what time would, is it? What time is it? It's it's right before our class. It's oh. 10, to, 10 to 11 on Mondays. But you're forbidden from participating. No, I'm not. <laughs> okay. You are never. Uh, I'll look for the link. Thank you. Okay. Thank I'll, you. I'll, I have to actually, this one, they're like a little group. I, I'll mention, they'll love it if you join, but uh, I have to mention it to them first. So okay. I'll oh, it. yeah. I won't do anything till, till okay. I hear from you. <laughs> till I... Okay. Okay. Right. Thank you. Right. Thank you, Rabbi. Okay. Right. And uh, tomorrow, I guess it was just us. Yeah. Today. And also, that's why I felt like I could, I needed to talk this out because I didn't, it was there. And I feel like it becomes more real if I talk it over with you. So I'm glad so. it was interesting. Okay. 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 All right. Okay. All right. Bye-bye. Okay. Right. Right. Bye -bye.